Yeah, this is actually probably like the, the easiest recipe you've ever done. <laughs> Genius recipes. I don't know. I made it with cream on toast once. Oh, People hey. Are kind of mad. <laughs> this recipe is the reason that I have started buying pita again and keep it in the fridge at all times, and it's my go to late night dinner. We are very lucky that we have the recipe's author, Leah Koenig, here today, who just published this incredible cookbook, the Jewish cookbook, and she's here to tell us everything about this recipe. It is called uh, Fatut Samne, and it is a Yemenite or Yemeni recipe, and it's sort of part of a larger kind of category of dishes that use torn leftover bread, because why would you waste, you know, good bread? And it's basically one of those more than the sum of its parts in a pretty extreme way. I think there's like four ingredients in the whole recipe, and it comes together in this dish that you kind of can't stop making and eating. Leah sent this recipe to me and said that she made it probably like five nights in a row after developing it. Yeah. And then I too have started making it all the time. It's why I keep pita in the fridge. And when I get to that point in the night where I'm like, oh no, we haven't eaten dinner yet. What are we gonna do? I always know that if I have eggs and pita and some sort of butter situation, yeah. I can have like an actual good filling dinner. So. The fat is important here, right? Like what, what kinds of fat can we use here? Yeah, so traditionally um, in Yemen, you would use a clarified butter, so they call it samne. Um, you could use ghee, which is essentially the, the same thing. But in my kitchen at home, you know, if I just have regular unsalted butter, I use that. I've used cultured butter before, which has a nice flavor. But the thing I like about ghee or samne is that um, there's no real uh, worry about the butter burning as the as the bread toasts um, because it's already clarified. So you get all that kind of like buttery goodness, but you don't have to worry about singeing it. Yeah, which yeah. means that you can get the pita extra, extra crispy, which yeah. is like one of the really wonderful things, that play of textures between the soft eggs and the crispy pita. And this is really not rocket science. You are <laughs> just allowing your bread to toast. You want to use a big enough pan that the bread has a place to go so that the, the crisping actually really happens. If you use too small of a pan, it starts to get um, a little more steamed and it doesn't get those little crispy edges that you want. So I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and we can actually crack our oh, yeah. eggs. Oh, I think I see a tiny bit of shell. We'll just... Oh, probably for me. Hey, you know what? <laughs> no, one's, no one's looking. Who's counting? Yeah. And then we just need a quarter teaspoon of uh, kosher salt. You can use table salt, but use a little less. Really quick, I just want to talk about your book for a second. Because okay. <laughs> it, I mean, this is an incredible feat. This took years and years. And like, what, it, what, is, what was the genesis of this book? Yeah, the idea behind it is really to capture the entire world of, um, of Jewish cuisine. And a lot of people think of Jewish food as sort of being um, Eastern European classics, brisket and potato latkes and matzo ball soup, um, which it is, but it's also um, very much a global cuisine. You have recipes in there from Yemen, which we're doing today. You have recipes from Mexico City, from Georgia, uh, Azerbaijan, um, Australia, India, just really everywhere. So it's a really exciting, just kind of vibrant take on what Jewish cooking really is. You can actually see that the pita has really like soaked up almost all of that fat, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Is it gross that I keep calling it fat instead of ghee? I can <laughs> no. start calling it ghee. <laughs> it's not gross. It's, it's reality. It is what it is. Because it could be ghee, it could be yeah. clarified butter or something. That, yeah. Um, Honestly, butter. if you are um, vegan, uh, well, you wouldn't make it, but if, you are dairy, <laughs> if you're dairy free, you yes. could make it with um, oil and it would, you could also make it with chicken schmaltz, I'm just realizing. Ooh, that would be so good. So I'm gonna pour in the eggs, and then what I like to do is kind of keep them keep them moving. This is where it happens, people. Just keep stirring them so that you get all of the pita kind of coated in the egg. But just like scrambled eggs, you don't necessarily want them to get too hard cooked because they'll continue finish cooking off of the heat. And that is all there is to it. Perfect. I'm ready yeah. for you. All of it? Um, we can. You can half, do half and half. And, yeah. Okay. Watch half the for heat. Me, half for you. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'll give you the bigger half. Easy peasy. This smells so good. Yeah. It's like sunshine on a plate. <laughs> I really plan this well, having you come for the first video of the day because I'm going to be really well nourished. For yeah. This it's breakfast. I mean, yeah. You could totally eat it for dinner, and I often do, but it's also a great breakfast. 
I love the like the toasty crispy pita and the creamy eggs, but then the fact that one of the topping options is honey is like a very surprising mm -hmm. and comforting way to eat eggs. Hey. Mmm. You can like hear the crunch. Mm-hmm. It's so good. If you like this recipe, which you will, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and buy Leah's book. There are 400 plus recipes in here for all kinds of different Jewish foods that you will want to make all the time. Thanks. See you next week. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs>